Hello everyone. Welcome again to my journaling site. I am so excited tonight because on my way in here to the pond, I heard not just one moose, but two moose charging away into the undergrowth and heading downstream. And this is moose mating season, so I can only make certain assumptions. Uh, the moose population in these woods has been in quite a decline since I first came here 13 years ago. In those days, I used to see moose tracks on almost every hike I took. One summer, I even made friends with this little guy here, Terrible Jack, a lonely teenage moose who hung around my beaver camp for a couple of weeks. For the last six years or so, I have hardly seen any moose tracks at all. I hope these two moose I just heard are a sign that the local population is recovering. The long-term projection for the moose population in southeastern Vermont is pretty dismal, however. These are true creatures of the north, and they depend on snowy winters and cool summers for survival. So climate change is likely to eliminate them from our region at some point. Here are some of the things I like to bring when I go to my journaling site. These are watercolor color pencils. You draw with colored pencil, then you use a paintbrush dipped in the pond, and it turns your colored pencil into watercolor. I also bring a portable set of basic watercolors with me so I can mix more colors. My pencil bag contains a few different thicknesses of pencil, different hardnesses, an eraser, an uh, ink pen that does not run when the ink gets wet, and this is a hot tip. This is a watercolor brush with a little tube attached that you can fill with water. Don't really need to dip it into the pool. Pencil sharpener also, good idea. I like to come down here at evening because that's a time of day when there's a changing of the guard. Different species are singing their last songs and going to bed. Others are just waking up and becoming active. So I often walk home after dark. And of course, my journal. This one has watercolor paper and I can keep track of all the goings on here at the pond and include some color. This is the colors I saw in the sky one night recently. And very important, I love these little folding camp chairs so you can sit down and have back support. Oh, and in here, of course, I never go to my journaling site without a possum. Persephone the possum is here tonight. I'm just kidding, of course. Persephone is a little baby possum that I'm raising. She has a, a bone disorder, so she may not be releasable. And for this reason, I am trying to keep her as friendly as possible because she's likely to end up being an education animal. Right, Persephone? When I first get to my journal site, I make myself comfortable and I jot down the date, the time, say a few words about the weather, what it's been like the last few days. This is October 6th. We've been in a drought all summer. Water levels are really low. I'd like to just sit for a few minutes and observe, listen, watch, leave the clutter of the world behind and feel where I am. This is a time of year, a transitional time when all kinds of things are changing. And I'd like to keep track of a few particular things during these transitional seasons, spring and fall. In the fall, I like to keep track of how things are changing color around me. So today I'm going to notice that the red maples around the pond are very red. The steeple bush behind me is starting to turn a bit golden. 
and the pines. Every year, pine trees lose a certain percentage of their needles and those have turned golden too and have started to fall. This study of changes during seasons has a fancy name, it's called phenology. And the study of phenology, seasonal change, is becoming increasingly important during these times of climate change. Think about it, certain things in the fall change as a result of temperature, like these plants around me that have been killed by frost already. Other things change as a result of day length. For example, day length triggers the coat color change in a snowshoe hair. And when these things fall out of sync, like when the snowshoe hair's coat changes to white and the ground is still bare, that is no longer an evolutionary adaptation that serves that snowshoe hair well. The times I see snowshoe hair, it's when they've turned white and they're against the bare earth. Among the things that indicate seasonal change are the shift in sound, so I often record what I hear. I hear a chickadee over there right now scolding. Beaver over there chewing. Ah, I do hear it. In the background, there is the faint chirping of sphagnum ground crickets. They're the crickets who love to live in this mossy, soggy environment where we are. So on October 6th, there are still crickets singing. I'd like to keep track of things like when I hear geese, oh my goodness, I wish you could see this, but there's a great blue heron flying over right now. So I encourage you to think of some seasonal changes you would like to document at your journaling site.